Go to overcomecompulsivehoarding.co.uk slash online therapy to get 20% off your first month of cognitive behavioral therapy with weekly sessions online with a therapist in addition to worksheets, a journal, meditation and yoga videos and unlimited messaging. There's strong evidence that CBT can help people who hoard and accessing therapy online can be affordable and accessible. Find out more and get your discount at overcomecompulsivehoarding.co.uk slash online therapy. Want flexibility? Take yoga. Want flexibility with your health insurance? Check out United Healthcare Insurance Plans. Underwritten by Golden Rule Insurance Company, they offer flexible, budget-friendly medical, dental, and vision coverage that may be right for you. More at uh1.com. I'm Sandra, and I'm just the professional your small business was looking for. But you didn't hire me because you didn't use LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn has professionals you can't find anywhere else, including those who aren't actively looking for a new job but might be open to the perfect role, like me. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you'll miss out on great candidates like Sandra. Start hiring professionals like a professional. Post your free job on linkedin.com slash spoken today. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. At Mint Mobile, we like to do the opposite of what Big Wireless does. They charge you a lot, we charge you a little. So naturally, when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Welcome to the Overcome Compulsive Hoarding with That Hoarder podcast. I am drowning in stuff and trying to find a way out. Listen as I explore the issues and delve deep as somebody profoundly affected by hoarding disorder. Find out more, including links to subscribe to the podcast at overcomecompulsivehoarding.co.uk and follow me on Twitter at That Hoarder and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash that hoarder. Okay, so why is it so hard to not buy storage items? I'm doing quite well at not buying and acquiring new stuff, but as soon as I make any progress with tidying up, I start to think, but if I had some really nice, pretty boxes, then I could store the things I'm keeping really nicely, and it would be organised, and I would have a nice home, and all I need to achieve this is some baskets and bags and boxes that look great, and maybe some shelving, maybe I need a whole shelving unit. And I know, I know, I know that at this stage, buying new storage items would just add to the clutter. There's nowhere to put them. I have storage items around the house that have never been used because because I'm useless. Why would new pretty boxes and baskets and bags be any different? I am sitting quite close to an unbuilt shelving unit as I speak, but then I go on the internet and I start looking at shelves or I start looking at boxes and I start to imagine organised homes with stuff in boxes instead of piles. And it's so tempting and I can almost justify it as, oh, but this isn't clutter and mess. This would be the start of a whole new organised path in which my house becomes perfection. I'm resisting. I haven't ordered a new shelving unit or a new basket or a new anything. But God, it's tempting. Really, I what what I'm telling myself is that I need to be in a situation where I've really got rid of all clutter and have decided for sure what's definitely staying in order to assess 
what storage, if any, I need. I am so far from that stage. I am not there yet. I need to be able to look at the storage I already have, remove some stuff from that that I'm not keeping, because let's face it, at this point, if it's on a shelf or in a cupboard, I probably haven't been able to access that shelf or cupboard for some time, and so I'm not using the things that are stored there currently. So I can probably get rid of quite a bit of that, maybe, we'll see. And so I might well need no storage at all, no new storage items at all, if and when I get to that stage. Getting Amazon to send me some new pretty boxes would just bring in not even just the new pretty boxes, but the cardboard boxes that the new pretty boxes came in, and the random extra packaging that Amazon throws in for fun, and all of those things that have to then be thrown out, which gives me more to throw out than I'm already having to throw out, which is a lot. I need to not buy the boxes. I've so far resisted the boxes. They are very pretty boxes. But if I need pretty boxes some stage further down the line, there will be the same pretty boxes or different pretty boxes still available online. Pretty boxes are not in short supply in the current world. It will be fine. I just need to remind myself of this seemingly again and again and again. One day I will think, oh, pretty box. I don't need a pretty box. If I did, I would get that pretty box, but I don't. So I will close this website now instead of adding them all to my online virtual basket and then somehow having the self-discipline to close that tab and get on with my life without going through the checkout. If you're listening and you're struggling with hoarding and you haven't got rid of 75% of your stuff already, then listen to me. Don't get the pretty basket. Don't get the shelving unit. And don't get the pretty bags. Not just yet. Anyway, hold out. As it is, they're just more clutter. Can you tell I'm talking to myself, really? Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Overcome Compulsive Hoarding podcast. You can find more online at overcomecompulsivehoarding.co.uk. You can find me on Twitter at That Hoarder and on Facebook at Overcome Compulsive Hoarding with That Hoarder. To find out more about how you can support this podcast and the overall project, go to overcomecompulsivehoarding.co.uk forward slash support and do subscribe to this podcast so you make sure you don't miss any future episodes. Now on Broadway, an enemy of the people is a New York Times critic's pick. Jeremy Strong is one of the great actors of his generation, hails the Chicago Tribune. In a performance, the Wall Street Journal praises as powerfully affecting and bitterly funny. Michael Imperioli sets off sparks, cheers the Hollywood Reporter. Victoria Pedretti is luminous, rings variety. From director Sam Gold and playwright Amy Herzog, an enemy of the people is urgent, electrifying, and haunting, declares USA Today. An enemy of the people on Broadway through June 16th only.